welcome back to the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. Thank you to everybody for, for tuning back in once again. Um, hope you've all recovered from Murrayfield on Saturday. Murphy, shall we just get that out of the way first? Try. Yep, done. Right, moving <laughs> on. Um, we're back in URC action this weekend. It's Origins Round here at Scotston. A uh, double header for you with our men's and women's teams. Our women t- taking on Brighton Thunder in the Celtic Challenge kickoff 430 and our men taking on the Dragons at 7.35 at Scotland. Murphy, again, previewing that one. How good is it to be back at home, first and foremost? Very good. It's been since, what, three, four weeks to, since the long? It's our first league home game in 2024. Just gonna now, that it makes it sound like <laughs> it's been ages, but we obviously played Talon here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's going to be a good game. I think Dragons' last game was a thriller. Um, but we also found out in... Uh, Found it in the what, the fence preview that we conceded the most tries from Dragons last season as well. So we've got to be on tip top form to make sure that we keep them at bay. Well, one man who will be hoping to be on tip top form on the pitch on Saturday night. Always is. Indeed. Back in the building and back fully fit, I believe, as well. Jamie Doby, welcome back to the Squadcast. Thank you very much. Good to be back. Duber. Just give us a bit of a lunch because obviously the last time we, we saw you in action was Ospreys, November. Yeah, um, correct. So down at Ospreys, unfortunately, fractured my fibula just at the end of the first half. So underwent surgical procedure and completed my rehab probably about three weeks ago. Yep. Um, so I've just he been... Blames the scrum for breaking his leg. <laughs> You're not wrong. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. <laughs> Back row shouldn't ever be that though, close so. to me. Jimmy, just do better. <laughs> but we've almost we, we joked around a bit you've almost come back at the wrong time from a Glasgow point of view because you were fit and ready to go the week after Toulon yeah exactly Which... so I think between me getting injured and getting fit there was a game every weekend bar one yeah. so there was probably nine or ten fixtures in that and then the week I was fit was the week after Toulon so yeah exactly I've kind of been fit for a few weeks now um, but there's not been any game so <laughs> Excited to, to hopefully be back out there against Dragons. Well, you've not been kicking your heels either. You've been out, obviously, with, with Gregor Townsend, Scotland squad, uh, in the lead up to the first two games of the Six Nations. Again, just tell us about, about how that was as an experience, obviously, out in Spain for the first first couple of weeks, first week, and then the, the two games with, with Wales and then home against France at the weekend. Yeah, exactly. So, as you said, I've been lucky enough to, to be in training with the, with the national team, which I suppose was great as the sort of point that I needed to get some rugby sessions into me was was the point Glasgow were having some time off so if I hadn't been um, I suppose it would have just been running with the physios um, and SNC here at Glasgow so it was perfect to get back into camp um, get some actual rugby training into me and obviously yeah it's always it's always good to be uh, involved in that and, and see what's going on so as you say spent a few days in Spain um, and prep for the, the Wales game um, and yeah I think it's been a good start of competition for them so and back in here start of this week yeah back end of last week actually had um a couple of training days here at the back end of last week and then this full week here so we've got a few boys back in the building from national camp which is, which is always good Thank you you're missing the netflix cameras no i don't think they'll feature me once <laughs> <laughs> well but, uh, radio. that's well, why you're on here <laughs> we'll seamlessly yourself. segue into back at scotland obviously a couple of announcements this week already uh, Gregor Hiddleston's first full-time pro deal announced on Monday. Uh, and then Gus Fraser. Uh, we Mad Gus. We Mad Gus, as you so eloquently put it on social media earlier on. Yep. Um, Murphy, we're going to seamlessly segue into a discussion about Origins Round by going back to the fact that you and Gus obviously grew up together, played together with, with the Eagles. Just give us a bit of a, yep. an insight into, A, how big a role the, the Eagles played for yourself growing up, and B, what was it like to, to run around with, with We Mad Gus, as I think we're <laughs> potentially going to now try and make yeah. stick by the sounds of it. We Mad Gus. Uh, no, it was obviously it's at the moment it's awesome seeing Gus like getting that contract renewed and him staying here for longer. So more time to spend with him and obviously we've spent the past I would say I'm gonna put a number, I'd say nineteen years I I reckon I've known Gus for. Um I've come from playing tag from the age of like four or five and then now obviously playing together here. Still yet to play together, I think. I know he said that today he was up our press today. Yeah, yeah, still yet to play together. I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> Don't worry, worry on issue. We're getting there. Um, but yeah, like going through the years of doing, we literally did everything together in terms of like rugby wise. We did all the Dundee Eagle age grades. We did trips to Stornoway, with Highland, all those trips as wee kids, and we went to France one to Lille actually to do a wee nice. tournament there. 
Um, and Gus was always my captain when I was a kid, mainly because Dad was a coach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Simon was his, Simon, his name was. Um, so yeah, Gus. Yeah, it's cool. But like I said, we did academy stuff, we did age grade stuff, and uh, we're obviously now here. He lived with me for a good amount of, I'd say, two, two and a half years when we first moved to Glasgow. So yeah, I'd say I know Gus pretty well, and uh, obviously, yeah, like I said earlier, it's amazing to see him extend his time here. And yeah, Origins, Dundee Eagles. We played with Dundee H HSFPs as well, yep. which um, is it's also, for you to say. Yeah, which is also linked to Dundee Eagles. So it's yeah, uh, yeah it's a very Dundee orientated combination I'd say. Well, and amongst the, the Dundee chat there you did also mention Highland which again is another seamless segue into our other yep. club of origin chat Jamie Highland yourself. Yes Highland's where it all started for me so um, I must have been nine or ten probably when I first went along to Highland's a bit older than Murph but um, the developer. yeah I was uh, big into tennis then so one of my friends or a couple of my friends played down at Highland in the minis so I love pretty much every sport, so I thought I'd give it a go and spent played for there for a couple of years, just doing the sort of Sunday festivals, the trips, yeah. playing Ellen, Sterling, all the teams up kind of north. Caledonia, um, I think is the yeah, official exactly. region. Yeah. <laughs> Caledonia. Um but yeah, so I uh, love my time there and then actually Did you come across Eagles? Nah, I don't think they mix the levels too much. Yeah, Dundee were probably too good for you. <laughs> Be a batter if they played you. I'm just going to sit here quietly and let you guys sort it out amongst <laughs> yourselves here. It's fine. Gus and I were chatting about it today at lunch. We were trying to find the original Dundee Eagles jerseys that we had as kids, but I, I, I'm pretty sure mine was at home. But we were saying how, like, we're reminiscing pretty much about how there were thick, thick cotton shirts. Yeah. And they were also extremely thick because they were reversible. Nice. So I was saying to Gus, we're going to try to find them, but also... I'm going to try to find the company that made them so we can make like big ones for us. <laughs> I was going to say, man, I don't think this fit in you anymore. <laughs> no, I don't think it will fit you. Like. Wearing your socks this weekend? Uh, I'll be wearing them in the stand, yes. Nice. Over. Yeah, I've got a pair of Highland socks sent down, so I'll wear one of them and then one of my school socks, Merkston. So to represent both. First. Um, to represent on, both um, <laughs> of my origins, I suppose. That's the yeah. two places I've played rugby before here. Well, it doesn't have to be socks for yourselves in the Stand Warrior Nation. If you do have anything that you are planning to rock on Saturday, let us know. Fleece, hats, socks, scarves, T-shirts, if you're brave enough to wear them in February in Glasgow. Let us know who you're sporting, and we hope to see as many clubs represented as possible this yeah. weekend. Question for you, the Noz. Oh, here we go. How many clubs I knew you were gonna ask of this. origin do Glasgow Warriors represent? Well, it's funny you should ask that. They are now all available on our Glasgow Warriors. That <laughs> so about this what fan is page. it? Uh, that's a great question. Though, so we're going to move on <laughs> swiftly because I don't have the number off the top of my head. But go and check it out. Okay, uh, let's crack on with the squadcast. For those of you who are new listeners to the podcast, in front of Murphy there is the hat full of suggested questions for this week. Um, we've got a couple sent in that aren't in the hat, but they are ready to be submitted and answered. Your job, Jamie, as you know, because you've been on before, is to pull them out, answer them as best you can, and make sure we have the traditional spike in listenership after the first however many minutes we've been recording. So, question number one. Question one. Whose phone is most likely to go off in a team meeting? There's definitely happened before. I'm trying to think who with. I was going to say, because we had this in a previous episode and we couldn't pick anybody that came to mind and it literally happened the next day and I was like <laughs> I wish we wish we'd recorded yeah. now and now I'm struggling to remember you get made to feel very silly if that is the case so it doesn't happen very often are you right are you right lock your phone down as much as humanly possible yeah like, airplane mode turned off mode. Yeah. nice <laughs> in the locker <laughs> yeah, oh. and braces um have you ever happened? Has it ever happened to you? Nah, no, at no. all. No, no. I've seen your Apple Watch, Apple Watch, Apple Watch go off a couple. Well, not go off, but other brands of watch are available. Yep, I've seen it go off a couple times because it'll be in our neighbours. And right. talk, talk to us a little bit about this as well. So would we see this about in a, a team meeting side of things when you've got the the, the seating arrangement? Yeah. Is there some degree of hierarchy, or is it just whoever claims a seat first? I don't think. It's hierarchy. I think it's just what happens at the start of season, and then it's just like what humans are forces of yeah, nature's fair. habit, or whatever it's whatever the saying is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd say there's a wee bit of hierarchy. I don't know, a wee bit, not crazy. I just yeah. Academy boys. Some of the shy. yeah, exactly. A lot of the 
all the more experienced boys are down the front seem to favour one side of the room. So yeah. currently, <laughs> during international break, half the front seats, the left-hand side, are very empty. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure. There's no designed order to sit in. It just sort of happens. I'd say we've got a strong row. Yeah. This could be one of the, one of the greats. Yeah. The all-time great rows. <laughs> it generally could be RT, myself, Dobie, Darge, Centu Nate, and JP solid. when he's there. Uh, does JP get the aisle seat because he's a foot taller than everybody else? I think he does, actually. But I'm, yes. if you had to make a team out of those rows, I reckon we could take on the whole They're thing. pretty handy, yeah. yeah. You'd have a very distinct game plan by the, the people that are in that row. Uh, Not, don't give it to Murph. <laughs> 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 there are two people that are allowed to kick in that row. Yeah, I'm trying to think what other rows would be. Well, Kev will be to having a tough time because it's just him, Shuggy, and Franco that sit at the front on the left hand side. In fairness, though, you'd back that trio to get a job done. Yeah, I won't say anything <laughs> <laughs> in case in case he's listening. <laughs> Which you told me he does listen. He does so. listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we, uh, do we have an answer for the, the phone off? I've just diverted off onto a tangent there. Do we have a, an answer for this one or are we just going to wait until the next time it happens? I'm going to wait. I don't know. Fair enough. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay for, tuned. I mean, we're not in tomorrow, but it might happen. It might, it'll it might happen, happen soon. Yeah, oh. I'll stage it. <laughs> I'm picking. Okay, so next question comes from our usual supply of questions. Rory. How are you, Rory? Good to hear from you. Um, you're actually a very apt person to get this one, Jim. Um, so inspired it's by about being small, it's <laughs> <laughs> inspired by seeing uh, Wee Nons uh, in the back row against Wales. Who would you play where in an out of position Glasgow Warriors fifteen? Now you can't pick Murphy at fly half. One to fifteen, or, or just like. Well, I think I think we'll I think we'll just pick one person you'd want to see in a different position. Cool. But we might recycle this question a few times and see how we get a team going forward. Um, so obviously, Jamie, you've got a bit of experience for playing yeah. quote-unquote out of position in the last well, couple of years. Yeah, the backs have become a bit accustomed to covering a couple of positions with the 6-2, which yeah. is... So I don't know if I can count myself as out of position on the wing now. <laughs> but, you are a winger. Um, i trying to think. If we're going to go something, say a forward in the backs or a back in the forwards... It's happened. I think... One of the... Who's a good show? Demo at centre. Yeah. Demo would be a good centre. 12 or 13? 12. Yeah. In 13 in attack, 12 in defence. If you can do that. Nice. I'd still love to see... Who's a quick prop? Delhi's a quick prop. I'll give him that. Yeah. Delhi in the wing. All right, come on. I think there's <laughs> maybe a few ahead of the queue in the forwards. Um, we've had a few. Tommy, Tom Gordon played centre Screamer. Oh, for yeah. the Vipers, the A-team against Sterling in last year's Super Series. And if you've not seen, he did score a world. He didn't it he? was world, superb. If yeah. you've not, we can, did he I don't know if he can be himself? linked. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did he just break the line then? It was, uh, both, yeah. Um, it is still available on our Instagram if you feel like scrolling back through our Reels history. Um, have a watch at some others as well because it gives us good viewers. Um, but yeah, no, he's an absolute screamer. You're 100% correct. I'm pretty sure he chips over the top of his own brother as well at one point, which is... That's one now. Bragging rights. Yeah, <laughs> bragging rights. rights. Crazy. Um, yeah, Tom Gordon's a good show, actually. Murphy, you got up, you've obviously said Delhi in the way. Uh, if I had to be serious, I reckon Stafford McDowell at second row could do a good job. Yeah. We've already thrown yeah, him up yeah. in the lineup a few times. Well, so, yeah. That's true. yeah, exactly. Don't think he'll be very happy with you about that. <laughs> no, not at all, but he'd do a good job. If we're yeah, seriously true. struggling. What about the I mean, what about six two lengthy, break, isn't he? Yeah, if the 6 2 <laughs> was breaking down hard and we lost all four of the second rows and probably some of the back rows. <laughs> Stick like. him in the boiler room. Because <laughs> staff has scrummaged before. Yep. Zebra, last season he was on. He was behind me at flanker, though. What about Mantier? Your left here. If he's packing down in the forwards, where are you picking him? That's tough. Mm. Don't worry, Jamie. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> ask you where you're picking Murphy in the box. Dobie doesn't have the heart and desire to play in the front row. <laughs> That's um, and Coming obviously, obviously lacking the strength, size, power. I mean, what the looks, the charisma. 
Um, so I'm going to have to say, just chuck him at six, just hide him out of the way. <laughs> so rich. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Me in the back line, where would you put me? <laughs> I'm exposed every single place, so... <laughs> Blindside wing off. Damage limitations here. Hide you. Uh, what about me at blindside wing last time? Ah, I wasn't out in the chaining park. Ah, he hasn't yeah. stopped talking about it, so. Should have seen me closing that door and what's that thing you do? What, the pendulum? Is it a pendulum? I thought <laughs> we don't. Backfield pendulum. I thought, ba- I thought that's like a thing of the past. Yeah, well, that's not exactly what we run, but. Yeah, we run, yeah. Pretty much I, I had it nailed. <laughs> March is coming up to me with clips afterwards saying. Well done. So you're you're angling for a spot in the two on the six two bench rather than the six. I'm angling a spot at eleven or fourteen. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the two on the bench. Fair news. Get there. On, on that note. A lot of rummaging. Another phone one. Who is most likely to leave the phone at home? It says from me. I think it was from you. I think this was when we had our, <laughs> our words team on the back. <laughs> so it's from I was like, what? Nice, man. Good question. <laughs> yeah, you submitted that one yourself. Well done. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Who's... Top work, Murphy. Um, don't think in this day and age many people are. I know Matthew Ferguson's, he's, I think maybe my first year or second year, he slept in. Yeah. He forgot himself <laughs> <laughs> to get in the building in time. He just Very turned up. I remember that. we were Walk throughs on the pitch for me. An hour, an hour into the day, oh, and no. he just strolls in. I remember you I'm, were close to you. Just, a couple of times, you literally said that you literally woke up and got straight into training. Once. Yeah. Panic. Recently, I was think. Not. I can't remember when it was. Yeah. Normally, I'm pretty good with that. Um, but there was one time, I think, I don't know if I got the timing wrong or my alarm didn't go off or I didn't snooze it or whatever, and I woke up. Probably Blind panic. twenty minutes pre meeting. Hmm. Lucky, lucky, I live about ten minutes away, <laughs> and made it. Boomed it in. Yeah, made it in time. But um, yeah, that's. Probably I remember right. seeing you so stressed that morning. I was like, "You all right?" And you're like, I've "Just come in. I just woke up." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure who um, would be the most likely culprit of that, but I had a bit. Oh, of a... Darji! Darji leaves his stuff over. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've said enough about Darge on this squad cast. <laughs> but not since he's been Scotland co-captain, so feel free. He hasn't changed. <laughs> well, hasn't changed in terms of that. He's changed big time. Like, he thinks he's a superstar. Now, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we don't like Darge anymore, guys. I mean, I, I feel we have to clarify just for the record. We, we do. We absolutely do. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Um, <laughs> we as in the Warrior Nation. <laughs> yeah, the whole club. <laughs> no, uh, what was that? Yeah, I had a shocker. Was going to our club partner David Lloyd for a wee recovery session, and uh, I was like messaged the group chat saying I'm going there. Boys were like, yeah, okay, I'll join you. I was like, sweet. So I got my bag and stuff. The one thing I forget: a pair of swimming shorts so I can go in the sauna and swim. I had to go buy myself a pair of shorts from the shop. <laughs> do you do that? That's <laughs> commitment. <laughs> I, I actually enough. got. I'm wearing them after training today if you want to see them after a shower. Nah, man. <laughs> Squadcast uncovered. Yeah, they're uh, <laughs> hydrophobic. Okay. So repels water. So I was very interested to see how that worked in the pool. How does oh, it work? I don't know. <laughs> it just got wet, so I was like, the line to me. It's not that hydrophobic then. No. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good value for money. They were on discount as well by £15, pounds, so. There you go. Steal. Murphy's now advertising something drunk, so. You know, I wasn't, yeah, <laughs> but I've, I'm going to leave the brand. It's Probably just, why. It's just Who's the teammate that never stops talking on the pitch? Now we've got to have a new answer for this one because it used to just be Ryan Wilson every single week. True. You have to speak a lot. Well, by nature, a scrum half should and does. Gog, George Horn does a lot. Sunday to Pilotu speaks a lot. Um, like in a. Organisate now. Nah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> All right, we're going that way. I was thinking a more organisational <laughs> role. I was going to say you okay. can definitely flip. You can definitely take this question both ways. Like, are we talking in terms of talking both to the teammates and organisational? Sione is very good at that. And what about Chirpy? Since Wilson has gone, who's Chirpy? I don't know. I've not really been out there that much this season to know. <laughs> Do you bite yourself to be Chirpy? 
I just sort of stick to my do you think stick to myself I'm not really worried too much about <laughs> come on you know there's someone I know he only does a bit yeah but he's he's not so talking of he's more just just little key moments yeah just dies that must be cool like well, not cool but like what, a, scrum, to... <laughs> a scrum set or like <laughs> Have a line out play where like the we're doing our thing forwards like getting set for scrum or line out them all or something and you've got all the time in the world to literally eye up your opposite man and say something to him and just oh, sh- surely it's the opposite surely at a scrum and you are head yeah. to head <laughs> with your man your opposite man that's when you've got I feel like does that like, not happened in the front row what I feel like doing your chirp to opposite man I feel like of the two of you if there's, if there's any staring down going to be done it's probably you at tight heads <laughs> Yeah, As you opposed say to that. Jamie who just stands like an inch away from a guy staring a guy in the face. <laughs> yeah, you say that, but like half the time... You're blowing yeah, up. Yeah, half the time <laughs> worried about breathing. Um, but also, you're also worried about saying something, like having the yeah. bottle to say something and then the penalty goes against you and then you stand up and look like an idiot. So usually the chirping happens after, after the scrum. <laughs> like you'll notice Wombat, he's big, fu- he's, he's funny. Like, he'll... If he has a good scrum, wins a penalty, he'll say something <laughs> to the guy who's obviously just lost a penalty and he's like walking backwards to his like 10 metres away and he's like, yeah, keep walking, keep walking. Good <laughs> on him. That's how it should be. I'd expect it both ways. Just like stuff like that. <laughs> um, I just like, he just tells opposition that they're rubbish and stuff. It's funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Batty does that a bit. But um, no, I'll I'll think about it. I'll think about it. It'll probably go the opposite way and backfire, but uh, we'll see what we can do. From Murphy again. <laughs> How have, right, you saw that I picked that out. I did, yes, square. yes, yes. Yep. Who's most likely to get lost in their own city? Great question. <laughs> wonder who sent that one in. Yeah. I suppose you probably need to nail down whether you're talking the city you live in, so... Glasgow, or if we're talking Inverness for yourself, you, Dundee for you. Did you get us lost in Inverness? No. <laughs> for New Year? No, nah, I wasn't. I was completing some running at Highland Rugby oh, Club. Oh, you were as yeah, well. So I wasn't there. You were. We were looking for a food spot and we got lost a couple of times, but Dobby, you were away. You're right. Um, try to think if anybody has got lost. I'm sure that, I mean, you can't count this as a home city for, like, like anyone gone missing on a night out of that? I don't know. I feel like this is a loaded question. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just thinking. <laughs> You've got an I answer. So. No, I don't. Mouth it to me, that's it. I don't have one. <laughs> oh, okay. Just trying to <laughs> provoke. Just stirring the pot. No. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I, I generally don't know anyone that would. Who's dopey? Who's, who's yeah? Who's most likely to Alex Samuel? Oh, Get lost yeah, in St Andrews. Probably. He's, I know he's a very smart guy, actually. Yeah, but yes. it's one of those. He doesn't book he, smart. Yeah, he maybe doesn't. Come he's tall enough that he can just look over the houses and see where he is. Right. <laughs> um, in terms of like the foreign boys coming over here, I could for sure see JP, JP nons. or big or JP. No, big nons. Being I imagine useless. you just wouldn't know because you would probably never say but I can see him doing a couple laps around the West End trying to get home <laughs> yeah for sure big nonny for sure but yeah. then again if he took you to his home city of what is the home city in Tonga I do actually know this he's told me but I can't remember <laughs> well I'm sure he'd be able to show us around yeah. he was showing us some delicacies he was they made while he was back and for World Cup stuff oh yeah yeah it looked really nice so what I'm thinking is squad cast on tour. <laughs> I don't know. everybody in at Tonga. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the meats were different. <laughs> they weren't just the usual. Yep. Um, but yeah, he showed us, and I was very intrigued, shall I say? I won't think I will be dabbling, but um, yeah, nons. We'll go for nons. That big uh-huh. nons, more well, specifically. The, the food chat has started on a Tuesday, which usually means it's probably time to call the end to this episode of the squad cast. Jamie, thank you again for, for sticking around. Uh, Murphy, as always, yes. pleasure. Um, and we will see you all at Scottsdale on Saturday night for Club of Origin night here at Scottsdale. 
uh, as we take on the Dragons in the URC, uh, preceded by the women taking on the Breath and Thunder in the Celtic Challenge. Tickets available at glasgowarriors.org. They are disappearing very quickly, so buy your tickets, wear your club socks, wear your club shirts, whatever you want to do. Uh, in the meantime, he's been Jamie Dolby, he's been Murphy Walker, I've been Craig Wright, and this has been the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast. Bosh. <laughs>